Do you have a mouse problem? Well, if you live in an RV or a van or you're thinking about it, it's just a matter of time. Nearly everybody who lives in an RV full time eventually has an issue with mice. You might remember a few years ago, I had a horrible problem with mice. I caught them in Utah and I could not get rid of them. Today, I'm gonna to tell you not only how to prevent mice, I'm gonna share with you some of the common entry points in RVs, but I'm gonna show you how to get rid of them. And then I'm gonna share my secret weapon, my secret for being mouse free in my RV for the past three years and no it's not Sadie Ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to find your own. Hey friendlies, I'm Carolyn and welcome back to my life living in an RV. I've been living in an RV for more than seven years. I've had a lot of mouse problems, but it's been three years since I've had a single mouse. And today I'm gonna to tell you how to prevent mice, if you get them, how to get rid of them, and I'm gonna share my secret weapon for keeping mice away. But first, do me a favor, subscribe to my channel. If you've been hanging around a while, but you haven't hit that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click it now and click the bell for notifications so you never miss a video. All right, so let's talk about mice and why they're such a problem for RVers. Well, RVers are notoriously not made very well, so there's a lot of places for them to come in. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. But a lot of us are traveling on public lands and it's mice habitat, right? They're free to live their mousy lives out on public lands. What I have found though is that the worst places for mice are the ones that get a lot of use. So a few years ago, I was in an area of Utah. They were uh, dispersed camping spots that were designated. There were definite signs of wear and tear, a lot of use. The whole area was pretty crowded. People leave garbage around. People leave garbage in fire pits. People, uh, you know, don't secure their food inside. And so mice have discovered that RVs are places for yumminess. So they, they hang around, they wait for the next RV or van to come along and they sneak in. So, you know, number one, I guess if you want to avoid mice, try to avoid the really popular areas but even then that that's not foolproof I mean mice are gonna come in if you don't follow a few simple simple steps for deterring them so why don't I go through some of the more vulnerable parts of your RV where mice are gonna come in number one is the engine everybody knows they come in through the engine compartment because that's not sealed tight there's many nooks and crannies they can come in through the doghouse i've had nests in my doghouse and they literally can climb up your tires and come up through your engine compartment i've seen sadie chase them in the in the engine compartment a lot of people like to leave their hood open because they don't like light they prefer dark places where they can hide so a lot of people like to leave their hoods open they like to put lights underneath their RV if it's a real problem if you're in one place for a long time that might be an option put lights under your RV put lights under your hood I've done all that don't know how well it worked really I tried solar lights and they uh, they they run out of solar power that, that didn't seem to work very well for me but a lot of people do that the other place where I think I was getting most of my mouse activity is my compartment in the back where my electrical outlet comes out and it also is where my our black and gray tank valves are. The problem is when I have the cords pulled out for plugging it into shore power or plugging it into my RV, it gives mice a nice little ramp just to climb up into that compartment. And I do have that cover, that round thing in the compartment. You can feed your electrical cord through and then, and then shut it to prevent mice from coming up. But I read that mice can actually squeeze through like a half an inch or a quarter of an inch. So that wasn't even working for me. I did that for a long time and I was still getting mice. And I saw mice activity in there like crazy. Like like mouse poop. I even opened it one time and saw some mice trying to hide in the corner when I really had that really big problem. I think I had like six mice in all that I caught. It was not 
one. So those are the two compartments I know of that mice were entering my RV. And I know they were entering through the hood because I saw a lot of mice activity up there uh, in the front around there. Sadie was chasing them. They were underneath the cushions and things like that. So those are the two compartments that I know of. If you know any other compartments for our mice to enter into RVs or vans, leave your comments below and let people know. But those are the two that I had issues with. How did I get rid of the mice that I had. I did a lot of research and you know there's buckets of water there's all kinds of things that you can do to get rid of the mice in your RV. I look for a humane way but the problem with the humane way is I had a lot of mice you catch them in a box you have to you have to release them like a mile away. I didn't want to carry a live mouse in a box a mile away every day. If you release them closer than a mile, they're just going to come back. That just wasn't feasible for me. Carrying a mouse in a box with Sadie out in wherever I was, hiking out into the woods or hiking out into the desert and releasing it and, and, and risking that it might come back, that just wasn't something I wanted to do. So I opted, and then there's the fancy glue traps, which I don't like because they are they seem cruel to me. They basically just get stuck and then they exhaust themselves to death. That wasn't an option for me. Poison is absolutely not an option, number one, because Sadie chases rodents and a m mouse eats the poison. It doesn't die right away. Sadie catches it and eats it and eats that poison and she's got that rat poison in her and it'll make her sick or kill her. But even besides Sadie, I don't like the idea of setting a poison, what is it, you know, other things eat mice, right? So I set a poison mouse out into the wilderness and I'm poisoning other wildlife and I don't want to do that. And so for those reasons, poison wasn't an option for me. I tried the plastic traps. They worked fine enough. I don't know, they seemed really sensitive. Sometimes they didn't get set off. Oh, and I tried the electric one. That's right, I tried the electric one too. I bought like three, four electric ones. Half of them didn't even work. So I, I think I caught one mouse in the electric. You know, you put a battery in them and I think they electrocute them. They go into this little compartment, you bait it and it's supposed to electrocute them. You know, no blood, no anything. You just have an electrocuted mouse that you have to get rid of. I think I ended up taking them back. Like, half of them didn't work at all. Like, they wouldn't even set. I gotta tell you, the best solution for catching mice, invaders, that's how I look at it. They have all this area. I mean, yes, as humans, we're encroaching more on their area, but mice are this big. That I don't understand. <laughs> they have holes and trees and all kinds of things to to make nests out of inside their, you know, in the forest and in the desert and I come along and they decide to make my home their home, uh, that, that's where I draw the line and that's why I decided that mouse traps were the best solution for me. Old school wooden mouse traps, you bait them, they work fast and easy, they work every time, they don't get set off without a mouse being in them, it, it's a quick kill for the mouse, they're not suffering, and yeah, you know what, sometimes I have to deal with a little bit of blood, and sometimes, and I have to deal with releasing the trap and, and the dead mouse and getting rid of it so that Sadie doesn't eat it, I mean, it's not pretty, it's not for the faint of heart, it took a while, you know, your first five or six and it's not as bad. I mean, so yeah, it's kind of gross, but that worked the best for me. I, th I think I had one or two after that before I started using my secret weapon. There's a myth that you have to throw out these traps after you kill a mouse in them. That's absolutely not true. People think that mice can smell death. <laughs> they, they can't. And in fact, uh, they smell other mice have been there, especially if you bait it and they're gonna go there. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute as far as mouse prevention. So yeah, you don't have to worry. You don't have to throw away the mouse trap every time you kill a mouse. I mean, they're cheap, they're like, less than a dollar a piece, I think. So if you wanted to, you could. And remember, always use gloves because mice can spread disease and you don't want that. And when you are dealing with mouse issues, like you know you have mice, you're gonna check the traps every day. For me, you know, you're living in a tiny space. I hear it. I'm laying in bed at night. I'm waiting for the noise. Scurry, 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 scratch, scratch, scratch. Sadie gets on guard. She stands at the end of the bed. And then I hear a snap. And oftentimes I'll get up right then and there and get rid of it. 
and so you don't have to worry about it rotting and smelling or anything like that. Make sure you put the traps where you can access them, but where mice definitely go. Next, we're going to talk about prevention. What are some of the steps I took to keep mice out of my RV so I don't even have to deal with any of the traps and stuff like that? All right. If you already have a mouse problem, you're hearing mice inside your RV, the first thing you need to do is figure out where they're coming in. Check all your compartments, check your storage bins, check on the floor in the cab part of your RV. You need to find any signs of mouse droppings and that'll give you a clue as to where they're coming in. The next thing you need to do is clean it. You need to get rid of all the mouse droppings, all the mousy smell. Not only are they leaving droppings, they're leaving urine behind. And that is a sign to other mice that there's something yummy inside or even nest building stuff, papers. They got all my tax receipts. They got napkins. They got toilet paper and made a mess and you know, all that stuff that they use to build their nests. So if you are leaving the scent of mice behind, they're going to know that other mice have been there. So there's goodies inside. So you need to get rid of that. So vacuum out, maybe go to a car wash, vacuum out all the mice droppings, and then wash everything down with bleach. You need to get rid of the mouse smell. And if you can find any holes that they might be getting into, there's a couple things you can do. You can plug holes with steel wool. They don't like the steel of this, but be really careful. I plugged the hole in my electrical compartment that goes up into my RV, but it's got electrical lines and I decided I wasn't comfortable with that. I took it out. It's steel that conducts electricity. I didn't want to burn my RV down. So when you're using steel wool to plug holes, yes, it works and you can use it in areas that don't have electrical wires, but be very careful with the steel wool. I'll put links to all these things in the video description so you can get them on my Amazon store. The other thing is I had a hole in a vent on the roof and the refrigerator vent. So it's a wide open space, it's flat, and then the vent goes on top of it and there's a screen and there was a hole in it. So I bought this self-adhesive body patch that I used to patch up that hole in the screen because I don't know, it, it was the refrigerator. It wasn't like the black tank or anything. So it's, Sadie's chasing mice. There was a screen and it's going into the wall behind the refrigerator, not into the black or gray tank. So that definitely could have been a place for where mice were coming in. That place in Utah, I heard them on my roof. I heard them in my ceiling. Uh, there was a very low hanging tree that was touching my roof and I was convinced that's how they came in. So inspect your roof and see if there are any holes, any openings. They're not gonna crawl into a black tank or a gray tank. They're gonna drown in the water if they do that. But there are other vents, your stove vent, your refrigerator vent, that they might come in. So that's the first thing you need to do. Clean out all of the areas that you see signs of mice and then plug up any holes. So now let's talk about prevention. Let's go inside and I'm gonna show you what I've done to make my RV less mouse friendly. There are no treats. There are no mouse treats. My RV is not mouse friendly, so let me show you what I've done. All right, after I had the mouse problems, I realized I was mouse heaven in here. I had nuts, I had chocolate. They love chocolate, by the way. I had all kinds of things in containers that were not mouse proof. So the first thing I did is I transferred everything that mouse might love into mason jars. So now I store all my nuts in mason jars. I store rice and beans in mason jars. Whenever I buy peanut butter, I buy it in glass jars because I don't like the plastic and I buy a lot of peanut butter. And I save those. I wash those out and I save them. So I store everything in airtight glass jars now. The other thing I do is I store anything, all my snacks and things like that, anything else they might love in my microwave. Now, of course it says, do not store, do not use microwave for storage, or don't do as I do, do as I say. Don't store things in your microwave. I store things in my microwave. Not heavy things, you know, extra nuts that I might have because mason jars do take up a lot of space. So when I'm, uh, you know, when I've got, when I filled up the mason jar and I have some left over, I'll leave those up here and my protein bars and things like that my pretzels. So all of that stuff I do store in my microwave and my cabinets. Everything is in jars. 
everything that I think mice might want to get. I do have some baking stuff up here that is that are in plastic bags. So everything everything is in mouse airtight containers, you know. And and even though I have a secret weapon, I just don't want to give mice a, any motivation to want to come in my RV for a a tasty treat. And that really has helped. The other thing is as far as cleaning, you got to clean the inside of your RV too. These storage spaces below my benches, I store a lot of paperwork and a lot of different things in this one. I store food in this one. They got in there, they ripped apart like I said, my tax receipts, papers and things like that. So I had to completely take everything out of that. I had to get rid of the mouse droppings. I had to scrub everything down with bleach. So yeah, you got to clean out the scent. I cleaned the front of my RV. You got to clean everything and get rid of the smell of mice so that other mice don't think that that's a, a trail to happiness. And finally, you want to know my secret weapon that I am convinced is what really has kept the mice away for the last three years? It's super simple. Peppermint oil. Few drops of peppermint oil in water. This is just a spray bottle. It used to be hand sanitizer. Now it's peppermint water. And I spray, but like every six months, I will go and spray all of the outside areas that they come into, especially that storage area where all my electrical cords are because the electrical cord does come out of that bin and onto the ground for my for shore power or for my generator so like i said that's a ramp so i'll spray the heck out of that when i'm when i have that cord out i'll spray the whole compartment i'll spray under around my tires i'll spray underneath my hood yeah you can use it on your engine i think i mean you know your engine will smell like peppermint when you drive uh spray it on my engine i spray my tires because they can come up on your tires so i spray the ground around my tires but one word of caution Essential oils can be toxic to your pets, so you have to be really, really careful. Not only can they make them sick, they can be deadly. You have to remember, though, that your dog's sense of smell is way more sensitive than yours. So I don't like using a lot of essential oils. If I can smell it, it's going to be obnoxiously smelly to my dog, if not toxic. So you got to be really careful about using essential oils around pets. And that's why I prefer to spray my outside areas with it and not my inside areas. Peppermint oil is toxic to dogs and cats. So be very, very careful about using it. But like I said, it's not going to hurt her if I spray the bins. She's not sticking her nose in those bins. If I spray the cord, if I spray the electrical cord, if I spray under my engine and my tires, not going to bother her. But that is my secret weapon, peppermint oil. And I have been mouse free for three years. As always, I hope you found this information helpful for your current RV life or your future RV life. If you have any secrets to keeping mice away, what are they? Share below. Let other people know how you're able to keep mice out of your RV or your home or your van. And again, I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. It's such an honor that you all tune in every week to watch my videos. Remember to hit that subscribe button below, hit the thumbs up if you enjoy my content. And if you want to support my channel and help me keep making free videos for everyone to enjoy, hit that join button below or join Patreon. It takes a community to keep this channel alive. And I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. I'll see you soon.